we had a bass player at the time, In Blood, Sweat and Tears, a terrific bass player. We had played with Keith Jarrett, played with that. He was great. Unfortunately, one of the things when you're in a pop band is you're supposed to entertain. And this individual, as great as he was, looked like he was having his teeth extracted while he was playing. He just didn't, he was miserable. And I think he liked the gig, but he just looked unhappy and I had to let him go. So while finding another bass player, and since Jocko was already in my house, I said, hey, hey, would you just come on, on the bandstand a little bit and play with us? And we had you know, Mike Stern in the band and Larry Willis and, and uh, um, Donald Elias. It was, a, it was a terrific band actually. So, so he said, yeah, sure, you know, I'll do a little while. I said, I'm not asking you to join the band permanently, just, just a little bit. He said, sure. So we had uh, our first engagement was, uh, I think, Harris in, in uh, Tao or something. And I remember a month in advance, I said, so how are we doing with this? You know, I, you know, I had cassette tapes and I gave him, you know, the tapes. I said, well, this is kind of our show, so just get a, a feel for it. You know, he said, oh, cool. And I would, as, as we got closer, I said, Jock, you, you know, do you have a chance to listen to it? He goes, uh, no. I went, What's not? He says, I know your music. I've heard your albums. I go, it's not really the same. I mean, yeah, the basic thing, but we do a lot of different things. It's, it's evolved. These songs have evolved. That's cool. And now we're like a day away. Jocko, I'm getting a little angry. <laughs> he said, no, it's cool, man. Don't worry about it. I said, I'm worried about it. It's not a simple thing. I'd really like you to, to you know, it's my band. I don't want to go out there and, and, you know, and suck. And he goes, no, it'll be cool. We are on the plane headed from New York to this gig. I am putting, I'm, I'm climbing behind him and putting headphones on his head. So you've got to listen to this. He said, no, it's cool. It's cool. Don't worry about it. Now I'm, I'm com completely you know, depressed and pissed off. And I call his room like an hour or two you know, before the showtime. I said, how are you doing? He said, oh, I'm listening. I said, oh, thanks very much. So we, we play that evening. Not only did he play the music you know exactly right he played it as if he wrote it he it was unbelievable it just like it was jaw dropping I, I mean the guys in the back of the hall they played they kept just turning around how could someone do that it was perfect but beyond perfect I mean he made every single right move every arrangement every stop everything was perfect but relaxed I mean and, and, and he didn't look for cues he and I asked him afterwards I said why, why did you put me through this he goes don't you know I have a photographic memory for music? And I said, no, you never told me. He said, well, I do. I don't need to hear it that much. Went, okay. 